Kathleen Captera, Miss Kathleen from Trinity Church, and I'm here to do a Sunday School lesson today. Here we go. But you know, before we have our lesson, we need to get ready. And one of the ways I like to get ready is to say a prayer. Take a deep breath and be all quiet inside. And one of the prayers that we say is like the creed. God is love, Jesus is the light, the spirit is here. Dear God, thank you for bringing me here today to spend more time in this place, the library at Trinity Church, and with all of the people watching this. I'm grateful that all of us are healthy so far and healthy enough to be here and to be safe in our homes. Please keep us healthy and safe all week so that we can gather again on Sunday and we can do the important work of loving and caring for those who need us the most. Amen. Now I have something different to listen to before we start the story. These are called Ting Sha. They're a little bit quieter than that singing bowl that I have usually, but these are also from Tibet. And do you know what they use these for in Tibet? They use them to wake up the ghosts so that they can feed the ghosts. Now, we don't necessarily, necessarily believe in ghosts. Uh, at least, I don't think I do. And I certainly don't feed ghosts. But it's interesting to hear what other people believe and what the practices are of other people. I think they only feed the ghosts at specific times of the year. I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up. But for now, I want you to listen to the sound. There are different ways you could play them. I might do them like cymbals. And when you can't hear the sound anymore, I'm going to start the story. Well, I don't know if you remember about the great family, Abraham and Sarah, and how they had a son, even though they were very old. And the son's name was Isaac. And he married Rebecca. And Isaac and Rebecca had children. And one of their children was named Jacob. He had a twin brother, Esau. But Jacob had 12 sons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wow, that's a lot of sons. 12 boys, but the son he loved the best was named Joseph. He was Jacob's favorite. The brothers were very jealous of Joseph because they knew he was Jacob's favorite. And then Jacob made Joseph a coat of many colors with long sleeves and the brothers were even more jealous. Well, one, Joseph started having dreams and one of the things he dreamed was that there were 12 bunches of wheat and his bunch of wheat had all the other bunches of wheat bowing down before it. And the brothers didn't like that. It sounded like Joseph wanted them to bow down before him. And then he told them about another dream. There was the sun and the moon and 11 stars. And they were all bowing down before Joseph as well. 
Then the brothers were really mad because it sounded like if the sun and the moon were his mother and father, Jacob and Re Rachel, then Joseph really thought he was something, that his mother and father and all of his brothers would bow down before him. And so one day, one day, Jacob sent Joseph out to see what his brothers were doing in the field. And when Joseph went out to check on his brothers, they were so mad they decided to kill him. But one of the brothers, Benjamin, talked the other brothers out of the idea of killing Joseph. They just decided that they should throw him into a pit. And there he was in the pit. And a caravan of traders came. And so the brothers decided to sell Joseph to the traders for 30 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph away to make him work for the Pharaoh. He was a slave. He was put in chains and taken away. But the brothers took the coat of Joseph and covered it in ram's blood and went back to Jacob and said that Joseph had died and they showed the coat covered with blood to Jacob and Jacob just cried and cried. He was so sad that he lost his favorite son. Now there's a lot more to this story that we'll talk about next week, but now I thought I would read you a book that reminds me of this story because the brothers were very jo jealous. They were jealous of Joseph. This book is called The Pain and the Great One. You see that? I'm gonna move the camera a little bit closer. The Pain and the Great One is by Judy Bloom. There are two parts to this book. One is called The Pain and one's called The Great One. It tells the story from both people's points of view. Let me see. This is the great one talking. My brother is a pain. He won't get out of bed in the morning. Mother has to carry him down to breakfast and he doesn't even open his eyes until he can smell his cereal. He should get dressed by himself. He's six. He's in the first grade, but he's so pokey Daddy has to help him get dressed or he would never be ready on time. He got to be first to show mom his schoolwork. She says ooh and ah over all of his pictures, which aren't great at all, just ordinary first grade stuff. At dinner, he picks at his food. He's not supposed to get dessert until he's eaten his meat, but he always gets it anyway, even when he doesn't eat his meat. When the pain my brother takes a bath, he messes up the whole bathroom. He gets powder and water on the floor, and he never gets his face clean. Dad says he will someday take care of himself. And I say, ha! He will not. He's a slob. My brother, the pain, is two years younger than I am. So how come he gets to stay up just as late as I do, which isn't really late enough for somebody in the third grade anyway? So I asked mom and dad about that, and when they tucked the pain in, they said, you're right. You are older. You should be able to stay up later. So they tucked the pain into bed. I couldn't wait for the fun to begin. I waited and waited and waited, but dad and mom just sat there reading books.
finally I shouted, I'm going to bed. We thought you wanted to stay up late, my parents said. I did, but without the pain, there's nothing to do. Remember that tomorrow, Mom said. But the next day, my brother was a pain again. When I got a phone call, he danced all around me, saying stupid things and singing songs at the top of his lungs. Why does he have to act that way? And why, why does he always want to be a garbage man when I build a city out of bricks? Who needs him knocking all the things down that I build with his dumb old trucks? And I would really like to know why the cat sleeps on the pain's bed when I'm the one who feeds the cat every day. That's the meanest thing of all. I don't understand how mom can say the pain is lovable. I don't understand. She's always kissing him and hugging him and doing disgusting things like that. And dad said, the pain is just what they always wanted. Yuck. I think they love the pain better than they love me. Now the next part of the book is the great one. My sister thinks she's so great because she's older, which makes daddy and mommy think she's really smart. But I know the truth, my sister's a jerk. She thinks she's so great because she can play the piano. She can t you can tell the songs that she plays are real ones, but I like my songs better, even though nobody's ever heard them before. My sister thinks she's so great just because she can work that can opener and I can't. So she always gets to feed the cat. It's not fair. She thinks she's better than me. My sister thinks she's so great just because Aunt Diana lets her watch the baby and tells her how much the baby likes her. And all the time, the baby is sleeping in my dresser drawer, my dresser drawer, which mom fixed up just for the baby. And I'm not supposed to touch him, even though it's my dresser drawer the baby is in. And the baby gets changed on my bed, says the pain. My sister thinks she's so great because she can remember the phone numbers when she dials the phone. She never gets the wrong person. And when she has friends over, they build whole cities out of blocks. I'd like to be the garbage man. I zoom my trucks all around. So what if I knock down some of their buildings? It's not fair that she gets to use the blocks all the time, I said to my mother. And my mother said, you're right. Some days you can have the blocks all to yourself. But I'm going to build a whole city without you, I tell my sister. Go ahead, she says. Go build a whole state without me. See if I care. So I did. I built a whole country all by myself. Only it's, the fun, it's not the funnest thing to play all alone. Because when I zoomed my trucks and knocked over the buildings, nobody cared but me. Remember that tomorrow, Mother said, when I told her I was finished playing with blocks. But the next day, I went swimming. I can't stand my sister when we go swimming. She thinks she's so great just because she can swim and dive, and she isn't afraid to put her face under the water. I'm scared to put mine in, so she calls me baby, which is why I have to spit water at her and mess up her hair, and even punch her sometimes. And I don't think it's fair for Daddy and Mom to yell at me, because none of it's my fault, but they yell at me anyway, 
then mom hugs my sister and messes up her hair and does other disgusting things like that. And daddy says, the great one is just what they always wanted. Yuck. I think they love her better than they love me. Hmm. The pain and the great one. They're both jealous of each other. They both think that their parents love the other one more than they love them. I wonder if you've ever felt that way. I wonder if Joseph's brothers were right to be jealous of him because Jacob loved Joseph more than he loved them. He really did. I know that my parents love all of their children the same. And I think maybe your parents do too if you have brothers and sisters. But sometimes it's hard not to be jealous of other people. I wonder if you know what the rest of the story is, what happens to Joseph later when he gets to Egypt, because that's where the caravan of traders take him to Egypt. Huh. I wonder if you know the names of all the brothers. Do you know that these 12 brothers later became the 12 tribes of Israel? We'll talk more about that later too. Well, thank you for coming to Sunday School today. I'm gonna to close with a prayer. Jesus, you have a happy smile. Help mine be happy too. And Jesus, you have a loving heart. Help mine be loving too. And Jesus, you have helping hands. May mine be helping too. Help me, Jesus, every day in all I do and all I say. Amen. Goodbye. See you next week.